Good morning, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Regent Bailing. Here. Regent Peterson. Here. Regent Atwell. Here. Regent Bechtel. Here. Regent Delgado. Here. Regent Grebe. Here. Regent Hall. Regent Jones. Here. Regent Klein. Here. Regent Milner. Regent Mueller. Here. Regent Peterson. Regent Plant. Here. Regent Ring. Here. Regent Stanford Taylor. Here. Regent Tiedemann. Here. Regent Tyler. Here. Regent Whitburn. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Before we consider any items on today's agenda, are there any members with a conflict of interest that needs to be noticed? I've got uh, one on the capital planning budget side that I'll recuse myself from. Regent Font, thank you. We'll note that for the record. And if you just refrain from voting or discussion on the select item, and thank you. Not seeing any other conflicts? Let's go ahead and start the meeting. Minutes of the March 7th, 2019, February 8th, and March 25th, 2019, Board and Executive Committee meetings are in your packet. Move any, approve. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously and thank you. A report of the Wisconsin Technical College Board System has also been provided. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, we'll incorporate that into the record. Good morning, everyone. To lead off on my report, I have an update on a couple of chancellor searches. First, at UW-Whitewater, the work of the Search and Screen Committee, led under the leadership of Regent Tracy Klein, is well underway. In fact, the committee will be meeting later today to determine semi-finalist candidates from its national search, and hopefully they'll be interviewed later this month. Thank you, Regent Klein, for keeping the matter on track and keeping it moving forward, and thank you committee members as well. We also last week launched a call for nominations to the Search and Screen Committee to help identify the Chancellor at UW South. Regent Jason Plott will be chairing the committee, and joining him will be Regent Chris Peterson, Regent Carolyn Stanford Taylor, Regent Mark Tyler, as well as myself. After consulting with members of the UW South Shared Governance Group and other members of the University Committee, President Cross will appoint the five non-regent members of the committee. From a management perspective, Chancellor Bob Meyer has agreed to stay on through August as we start our search, and Provost Patrick Gilfoy has agreed to serve as interim chancellor until we find a successor. Turning to upcoming events, once again, the UW Systems Research in the Rotunda is in its 16th year and will be held on Wednesday, April 17th. It's a wonderful opportunity to see our faculty and our students showcase and exhibit their research projects. I'm hopeful that as, men, as many members of the board can join me, and it's just a tremendous opportunity to see our students and our faculty at work. Speaking also of big events, graduation day is upon us. I, I know I'm speaking at UW Eau Claire's graduation as well as Madison. I know a number of you have also volunteered to speak. If our new regents haven't had a chance to speak yet at a graduation, please do so. It's, it's a tremendous honor, and it's just a lot of fun. And I know our chancellors would always love to have you on campus. And speaking of graduation, we have a graduate amongst us today. Let's give an early round of applause as on May 27th, Regent Ring will graduate from UW Eau Claire. With that, that concludes my president's report. President Cross, the floor is yours. I still have to sign that diploma. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's two of them. That's two of them. <laughs> Good morning. Let's start with an update on the 2019-21 biennial budget. We're working closely with the governor and legislative leaders as the budget moves into the Joint Finance Committee process. So we greatly appreciate the governor's budget proposal and we are building on that with legislators as we continue to advocate for an increased investment in the university from the state. As for our capital budget request, we continue to receive positive feedback. The State Building Commission did not forward a formal recommendation. However, legislators from both parties and the governor's office have indicated they understand the risk of not investing in our infrastructure and the cost of further delaying critical 
renovation, remodeling, and replacement projects. I visited several campuses recently, including UW Parkside earlier this week, UW Milwaukee before that, to continue to make a compelling case for addressing these issues. The Joint Finance Committee, uh, referred to as the Joint Committee Finance, has announced its public listening session, and two UW system campuses have been selected to host the session, UW River Falls on April 15th and UW Green Bay on April 24th. By the, by the way, a couple of our chancellors are not here today because they are at uh, a hearing in Janesville today. These are great opportunities to showcase our campuses and to communicate directly with legislative leaders uh, from, um, from throughout the state. I encourage chancellors and campus leaders to participate in these hearings. A federal, on the federal front, last week I had the opportunity to make a trip to Washington, D.C. with Chancellor Ford, Chancellor Shields, and Regent Ring, as well as Associate VP Chris Andrews and David Speck, Speck Boardman uh, from our federal relations team. We had the opportunity to meet with all members of the Wisconsin delegation and several members of the Education Department, including Secretary Betsy DeVos, Diane Jones, and Bob King. The main ask come directly from the federal agenda approved by this board. We focus principally in our visit on indexing the Pell to inflation, simplifying the FAFSA, lifting the budget caps, and including language that defines competency-based education and federal statutes. Also on March 21st, first President Trump signed an executive order directing federal agencies, including the Department of Education, to verify that existing institutions receiving federal grants are in compliance with existing federal law related to free speech. Uh, the Board of Regents and the UW system considered this issue back in October of 2017 and approved Region Policy Document 4-21, a policy for the UW system with a commitment to academic freedom and freedom of expression. The purpose of that policy was and is to communicate the board's commitment to academic freedom. In other words, I believe our efforts and the action this board took back then uh, have actually preceded the proposed action by the president, so we are well within the expected guidelines. Closer to home, the UW System Business Council held its semi-annual meeting last week um, up in Green Bay. The Packers hosted that meeting. Uh, and it was good to be there in the new tech, uh, what they call Title Town Tech Center. <clears throat> it was chaired by former Governor Tommy Thompson and is composed of nearly 30 executives th from throughout the state. I was particularly encouraged by their commitment to help us find ways to better serve their employees, the employees that are already seeking um, additional education. Turning to other updates, earlier this month I attended the last meeting of the Dairy Task Force convened by Governor Walker and then continued by Governor Evers, the task force has brought together dairy industry leaders from throughout the state to address challenges facing the dairy industry. Uh, you may recall that the UW system along with DATCAP and former Secretary Sheila Harsdorf has been a sponsor of the task force, which was one of the recommendations to come out of our Wisconsin Idea Summit in 2017. So I want to thank current DATCAP Secretary Pfaff for his commitment to continue the task force and to Dr. Mark Stevenson, who, who chaired the group for his leadership uh, in that process. Overall, they brought forward about 50, I think 49 recommendations, most of which have broad industry-wide support. Neither of these, a few of these recommendations addressed dairy's immediate problems. Most are long-term efforts. We look forward to working with legislators and, and Governor Evers as proposal moves forward. A quick update on our All in Wisconsin campaign, the video you saw last month continues to generate positive feedback, and we're working with our campus colleagues to expand its reach even further. I would also like to call your attention to the All in Wisconsin page on our UW system website, where you'll find links to success stories from every campus, so I encourage you to check it out. So I also want to thank and compliment, and I just thank um, UW Stevens Point Hockey. They won the Division Three National Championship. So congratulations, Bernie. <laughs> the 
UW Oshkosh's men's basketball national championship, Division Three. So finally, um, I have some comments that I mentioned last during our last meeting in March, but Bob Meyer was not here. Chancellor Bob Meyer uh, has announced that he'll be stepping down. <coughs> he wasn't here at that meeting, so he didn't get to hear the compliments I made, which he probably seldom hears anyway. But so Bob has spent almost four decades in higher education, including 32 years at Stout, where he served as a faculty member, a college dean, special assistant to the chancellor, and finally as chancellor. Um, and until recently, well, I kept hearing this rumor. I didn't really know if it was true. He's worked there for so long. He went to school there. It's in his blood. I heard that he actually was growing horns. <laughs> the Blue Devils have horns. <laughs> I guess the rumor is true. So, Bob, you've been a thoughtful and dedicated leader, and we've all enjoyed working with you. So, all the best in your retirement. Thank you, Bob. some news from around the system. I draw your attention to the, to the screen. <laughs> Through the hard work and initiative of UW Oshkosh senior Brianna Lang, the campus welcomed a prominent national speaker in March to kick off Women's History Month. Longtime social justice activist Angela Davis used her keynote to inspire a packed crowd of more than 700 in Reed's Union. Davis spoke about justice for women of color and met many of the nation's members who were eager to meet her afterwards. UW Parkside is proud to announce that Maya Peterson and Sam Rosani have earned the 2019 UW Parkside Big Idea Award for their research projects about new nutrition supplements for aging populations. With the guidance and support of Dr. Daryl Sauer, the team is working on a molecule that has the potential to enhance physical performance and brain function and also build and restore muscle mass. Powered by her own determination and with the help of caring faculty and staff at UW-Whitewater, Anastasia Wilson, who was born with cerebral palsy and dyslexia, is living her dream and inspiring the next generation. She embodies what it means to be a Warhawk. Pursue your passions, overcome obstacles, aspire for excellence. For UW Superior students, Opeyeme Omawali and Obiagwi Ikwanwa, Getting involved in the Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship Program turned into a project that not only benefited them, but also the City of Superior. Both seniors from Nigeria, the two brought fresh perspectives to help revitalize the area's retail industry. UW Stout's Dylan Lubes recently became the first ever undergraduate to receive the Men in Education Award from the National Association for Education of Young Children. This early childhood education major from Chippewa Falls conducted research with Professor Jill Clefted about male early childhood educators and was part of a faculty-led study experience in Nepal. As part of his undergraduate research, UW Stevens Point Jr. Tyler Hillary is helping Central Wisconsin employers create a hiring process that minimizes employee turnover and saves training dollars. Hillary and his faculty advisor, Nicholas Butts, are applying a grit scale of personality traits, such as courage and endurance, to help local businesses retain employees. Hillary will present his research at UW System's 16th annual Research in the Rotunda in April. UW River Falls physics major Roman Alvarado is conducting groundbreaking robotics research that could change the lives of amputees around the world. The senior is working on the design and construction of a myoelectric partial hand prosthesis. The university offers students like Roman opportunities to conduct research as part of their academic experience as early as their freshman year. UW Platteville student Eva Bertel's research is out of this world, literally. 
a junior environmental horticulture and biology major, is part of a student team that placed in the top five in a NASA-sponsored challenge to propose greenhouse concepts for Mars. Bertel joined the challenge after completing an internship at NASA, where she contributed to research on agricultural production on the International Space Station. UW-Milwaukee is committed to encouraging undergraduate research, even starting as soon as the summer before freshman year. More than 1,000 UWM undergrads are involved in research each year on topics ranging from 3D printing of bone scaffolds to preserving a long-forgotten 16mm film archive. UWM is one of two universities nationwide honored in 2018 by the Council on Undergraduate Research. UW-Madison students helped create an oral history project about the black student strike 50 years ago. Joined by white supporters, the students boycotted classes, took over lecture halls, and blocked building entrances while galvanizing community support behind their demands to enroll more African-American students and hire more faculty of color. Several of the former students recently shared their experiences during a panel discussion at the Memorial Union. UW Lacrosse faculty hope to inspire students to pursue futures in science. Biology faculty took five K-12 teachers to Belize in January to study bioluminescent ostracods in the Caribbean. UWL alumna and 2018 Wisconsin Middle School Teacher of the Year Maggie McHugh was among those who shared their experiences and data with students back home via Skype. UW Green Bay Marinette Campus Professor Renee Ritchie's research in Qatar may someday help to prevent diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Ritchie is studying neurotoxins found in algae blooms that seem to link a certain neurotoxin to these diseases. In another study, she is collaborating with faculty and undergraduate researchers to see how blue-green algae might be useful as a biological water filter. UW Eau Claire history professor Dr. James Oberly and student researchers traveled to Budapest to help bring to life the World War II diaries of Dr. Maria Mati, who saved a young Jewish boy from persecution in Hungary. The Blue Gulls are creating a website and interactive storytelling tools to make the diaries, which are housed at the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum, more accessible. Thank you, President Cross. We'll now go to committee reports. I'll call upon Regent Klein to present a report of the actions taken by the Capital Planning and Budget Committee. Regent Klein, the floor is yours. Thank you, Regent President Stanley. Um, the Capital Planning and Budget Committee met yesterday morning, and we have uh, various resolutions to move forward in front of this body. I will um, I will read them and then um, move them in on us. Um, the first of the five is Resolution 1.3D, brought by UW Parkside, and it requested approval to execute a 50-year land use agreement between the Board of Regents and Kenosha County to allow for construction of a multi-use recreational trail system along with River Bay Restoration Project on the UW Parkside campus. Um, I would just note that um, in light of the length of the lease, we did as a committee assure ourselves that there was easy termination, um, that it did not interfere with the capital planning um, uh, facilities plan for UW Parkside, and that there is adequate, um, adequate liability insurance, both on behalf of the system but also on behalf of the county, where we are an additional insurer. So that is resolution 1.3b. Resolution 1.3c was brought forward by UW River, River Falls, and it requests approval to increase the budget of the Rodley Hall renovation project by $800,000. Um, and the project is, is underway. It's renovating uh, 63,000 approximately gross square foot in Rodley Hall to accommodate a student service test center um, and was enumerated in the 2013 and 2015 capital budget. Or 2013 to 15 budget. Um, next was resolution 1.3D uh, in all agency um, uh, maintenance and Project brought forward by UW System at an estimated cost of $18.7 million. These projects, and there are multiple, include athletic facility renovations, roof replacements, fire alarm system upgrades, soccer field renovation, and um, roofing and lighting roof renovations at UW Green Bay at the Wideman Center. So that is the 
that and all, it was just the reconciliation came up and um, uh, it was in renovation. Uh, resolution point uh, 1.3E is brought forward by University of Wisconsin Madison. It requests authority to execute the remainder of its design, um, design contract in order to construct a UW managed educational sciences center within the education research um, sciences or educational sciences building. Uh, the main objective of this project is to create a collaborative open working space um, with um, science technology. Um, we have resolution 1.3F that is brought forward by University of Wisconsin Madison, and that is to execute the remainder of the design contract to construct a UW managed medical science center um, within the context of the chemistry <coughs> remodeling project. Um, and those are the resolutions. I would move them forward if I could have a second, please. Second. Moved in second. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, let's proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And thank you, Regent Klein. I'll now call upon Regent Gravy to present the report of the Audit Committee. Regent Gravy, the floor is yours. Thank you. The Audit Committee met yesterday morning and began the meeting with a brief discussion of the recent national college admission scandal that has been much publicized. While we have absolutely no reason to believe that anything of that nature is happening or has happened at UW-Madison or any other UW institution, the committee agreed that it would be appropriate for us to inquire as to what protections are in place here to guard against such an event ever happening here. Accordingly, we've asked Chancellor Blank to have her admission staff address the committee in June to talk about what controls are in place here at UW-Madison and engage in a discussion with the committee. I would encourage each of my colleagues and anyone else who's interested to read Chancellor Blank's recent blog posting which discusses this topic, addressing some of the questions we'll be discussing in June. I'd like to thank Chancellor Blank and her team in advance for their preparation and participation in this discussion. Moving to the substantive portion of our meeting, our Chief Audit Executive, Lori Stortz, started by reviewing the progress to date on the fiscal year 2019 audit plan. She confirmed that her office expects to complete the majority of the plan in the next few months. She then provided a high-level summary of the result of certain audits recently issued by the Office of Internal Audit. Of particular note were the Chancellor's Business Account Audit at UW La Crosse, which found no exceptions and the system-wide hazardous and universal waste audit. Ms. Stortz expects to deliver more audits at our June audit committee meeting. Ms. Stortz then discussed the status of the system security and access audits and emerging themes. As the board is aware, IT security has been a point of emphasis for the audit committee, as well as for the business and finance committee, and for the board as a whole, and will almost certainly continue to be a point of emphasis in light of the current atmosphere that all organizations operate in, in terms of the IT threats which exist today and continue to multiply. Ten audit reports have been issued and four are in the field. Ms. Stortz reported that the auditors and management at our institutions continue to make good progress and there is a strong sense of what the consistent areas of risk are across the system. Following a discussion of those audit results, the committee asked what would be done next as a result of those findings. Vice President Kramer shared a series of goals and objectives for the next fiscal year, and we plan to hear updates going forward, including from Kathy Mayer, our Associate Vice President for Information Security. Ms. Storch reported on management pro management's progress to date on the audit comments and response plans included in the audit reports. I'm pleased to report that the Office of Internal Audit continues to receive excellent cooperation from management. Finally, Ms. Stortz provided the committee with an update on the use of the UW system hotline. There have been no major issues reported from September 27 through March 2019, including no reports of fraud or criminal activity. The, uh, the committee discussed the benefits that the hotline offers and the ways in which staff and students across the system are made aware of the hotline. Ms. Stortz committed to collaborate with system and institutional leadership to ensure that our campus committees are aware of the hotline. The audit committee is also receiving regular updates regarding the status of the system-wide enterprise risk management effort. 
Accordingly, Director Angela Ryan and Associate Vice President of Administration Ruth Anderson shared an update regarding the recent actions and next step plans for the Enterprise Risk Committee. Finally, the committee heard from Katie Ignatowski, the new Director of Compliance, who joined the UW system in February. Ms. Ignatowski provided a summary of her background and explained why, is it, why it is appropriate, if not necessary, for the system to create a formal Office of Compliance, noting that the vast majority of similarly situated institutions already have or plan to develop similar offices. She also described her initial actions in this role, meeting with chancellors and their teams at each of our institutions and developing a roadmap for implementation action. Specifically, she'll be developed building a compliance matrix across the UW system and plans to return to update the audit committee in late fall. The committee was very pleased with the cooperation among internal audit, risk management, and compliance and looks forward to hearing more from them in the future. That concludes my report. Thank you, Regent Kirby. Given that admissions issues are a, a nationwide story for weeks running, I'm so happy that your, your committee took up that work. Great to hear a clean bill of health. Uh, thank you for doing that. And I, I thank Chancellor Blank as well. I read the blog. I thought that was uh, very well done and very timely. So thanks to both you two. I will accept that report. <clears throat> now we'll turn to Regent Whitburn to hear a report of the actions taken by the Business and Finance Committee. Thank you, uh, Regent Bailing. Um, you'll recall in our December meeting, the board approved updated salary ranges for our senior people in salary ranges one through eight. Yesterday, the committee approved a recommendation uh, from staff for range nine of the system president's range. The committee recommends approval of a 2.13% base wage increase for those uh, of our workers in the Buildings and Construction Trades Council of South Central Wisconsin. The proposed collective bargaining agreement covers the period January 6, 2019 through the end of the fiscal year. These employees, importantly, are not eligible, repeat, not eligible for the across the board uh, compensation increases provided in state pay plans. We do this in two resolutions as the state statutes provide for our collective bargaining processes, uh, one for UW Madison affected employees and the second uh, process for non-Madison employees. As our staff continues to uh, update as needed our region policy documents, in this meeting we considered two very interesting region policies, including policy document 22-1 which goes back to 1972 and the merger of the state university system with the University of Wisconsin uh, system and the question of what to do about the relative assets, the combining of the assets. Also in Region Policy 22-3, approved in 1982, uh, a policy was developed by uh, the previous board uh, toward the disposition of difficult to deal with grants, sometimes People give us things that we cannot accept or may even be illegal to accept. In our proposed action today, we're sunsetting those two region policies while putting in place a new and timely policy entitled Institutional Funds Held by the UW System for Charitable Purposes. For UW Madison, we approved and recommended uh, four board approval here, a five-year dining uh, services contract with Aviance a uh, Minnesota-based uh, food service firm. UWM uh, requested approval of a contract with a Learfield Communications subsidiary for athletic department marketing and medium rights. And uh, the committee approved a five-year contract for UW-Madison with i for clinical trial services mm -hmm. related to retinal diseases and the research around the diseases going on in our Fundus Photograph Reading Center here on this campus. As I reported last month, Vice President Kramer and Madison Vice Chancellor Heller are hard at work setting the table for a very significant, very major overhaul of our business processes in financial systems and also in the human resources systems. Um, we expect to hear a presentation here at the full board on this important subject 
uh, at our July meeting. The committee also received an update from Vice President Kramer on work being done to standardize certain functions across the campus. This is effectively implementing best practice programs. Initial implementations are now beginning around such functions as employment investigation services, payroll, air reporting, time and uh, leave reporting, procurement training. We'll hear more from them um, in uh, future months on this so-called shared services initiative, which is now gaining traction across our system. Finally, good news we want to bring to your attention. Vice President Nelson reminded the board uh, and the regents in our meeting that we're now celebrating our first anniversary of the shift of the region trust funds uh, from our cognizance over to SWIFT. And with it, uh, 12 months in, uh, he reports management fee savings totaling $1.7 million. So, on behalf of uh, the Business and Finance Committee, I would now approve a move approval of Resolution 12D, E, F, G, H, I, and Resolution 12J. And because salary range changes under region policy must be taken by way of a roll call vote of the board, we should do that vote in a roll call. Thank you, Regent Whitburn. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Any questions or discussion on the Business and Finance Committee report? Seeing none, I'll do a roll call vote. All in favor, uh, report yes to the clerk. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Regent Bailing. Yes. Regent Peterson. Yes. Regent Atwell. Yes. Regent Bechtel. Yes. Regent Delgado. Yes. Regent Grebe. Yes. Regent Hall. Regent Jones. Yes. Regent Klein. Yes. Regent Milner. Yes. Regent Mueller. Yes. Regent Peterson. Regent Plant. Yes. Regent Ring. Yes. Regent Sanford Taylor. Yes. Regent Tiedemann. Yes. Regent Tyler. Yes. Regent Whitburn. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And thank you, Regent Whitburn. We'll now call, call upon Regent Milner to present a report of the actions taken by the Education Committee. Regent Milner, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Bailing. Yesterday, the Education Committee received a report from Interim Vice President Karen Schmidt, who provided an update on the UW system restructuring of UW colleges and UW extension. Dr. Schmidt focused our attention on two-year associate degree programs. She explained how <coughs> these degrees are approved and how they help students transfer from branch campuses to our universities in order to complete bachelor degrees. Dr. Schmidt also introduced Dr. Deborah Carr, 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 who is the co-chair of the UW Systems Task Force for Advancing Teachers and School Leaders in Wisconsin. As you may recall, in December, the Education Committee asked the Interim Vice President Schmidt to charge a task force to address the following program, problems. Over the past decade, our UW system colleges of education have seen a significant decrease in student enrollment in teacher education and teacher, teacher leadership programs. At the same time, workforce demand is not met in Wisconsin for highly qualified teachers and school leaders, especially in high need fields and school, distri and, and school districts. Dr. Kerr report, reported on the progress of the task force. She highlighted three public listening sessions by which the task force will seek public input. She also highlighted the task force website in which members of the public may submit written comments and upload documents to assist the task force in completing its work. Finally, Dr. Kerr uh, stated that the task force will present an evidence-based report to the Board of Regents at our June meeting. This report will, number one, recommend financial incentive programs to increase enrollments in UW system schools and colleges of education and help Wisconsin workforce demands. And number two, share the concerns and recommendations of key stakeholders to increase public esteem for teachers and school leaders in Wisconsin. 
Next, the committee um, approved the UW Green Bay Select Mission Change. Chancellor Miller explained the process by which the revised mission statement was developed. He also explained that the revised mission has broad campus and community support and that it reflects both the present and future economic needs of the Green Bay region. Finally, the committee unanimously approved two collaborative online master's degree programs. These include a Master of Science in Applied Bio Biotechnology and a Master of Science in Information <coughs> Technology Management. These degree programs were developed by UW Extension Campus in collaboration with lead campuses, UW-Madison and UW-Oshkosh, as well as seven of our UW institutions. The committee focused special attention on learning more about how collaborative degree programs work. This is because collaborative degree programs fulfill the vision of Regent Policy 15-3, which requires our campuses to collaboratively approach online learning. Dr. Bauer, Aaron Bauer, who is the executive director of the UW Extended Campus, explained that collaborative degree programs offer online credentials for working professionals. These programs are developed in response to market research and which, which proves that there is workforce demand. UW campuses, campuses may choose to uh, participate in collaborative degree programs, and they often do because they could not offer these degree programs on their own. Finally, Dr. Bauer explained the UW Extended Campus support supports 22 collaborative and certificate degree programs. Currently, 4,400 students are enrolled in these programs with enrollment expected to double in the next five years. And as a note, the committee invited the provost from our, our UW institutions to the table for this discussion. And as a result, we had a very robust and informative discussion, which I hope at some time in the future we can do at the board as a whole. Uh, Regent President Bailey, this concludes my report. Therefore, as unanimously approved by the Education Committee, I move for adoption by the Board of Regents resolution 1.1.C through 1.1.D sub 2. Second. Motion and second. Any questions, debate, or discussion? Seeing none, let's proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> and thank you, Regent Milner. Before we go to, on to item number nine on the agenda, I, I believe, Ray, you have one more quick point of good news we should share. Yeah, I, when you get old and you can't remember things, you can't read your notes, you forget some things. I forgot to mention the national championship the women uh, achieved at oh. Madison in Division One hockey. So, congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you, President Cross. We'll, we'll now go to item number nine on the agenda, which is one of our most enjoyable responsibilities as a board, and that's the presentation of our Region Awards. Today we present the 27th Annual Region Teaching Excellence Awards. To lead us in that presentation, I'll turn the floor over to my colleague, the Chair of the Award Selection Committee, Regent Jen Mueller. Regent Mueller, the floor is yours. Thank you, good morning. On behalf of the Board of Regents, it is my pleasure to welcome our distinguished guests this morning, the recipients of the 2019 Regents Teaching Excellence Awards. We also welcome their families, friends, and colleagues who are joining us today. This marks the 27th anniversary of the Regents Teaching Excellence Awards. And today we recognize and honor two outstanding teachers and one program. It's a welcome reminder of the training, dedication, creativity, and passion our faculty bring to their craft. Exceptional teachers go the extra mile in their teaching by helping their students reach their full potential. And as I just noted, we are honoring three
three exceptional recipients today, two professors and one academic program. This is indeed a special honor. This is the highest recognition bestowed by UW system on members of our faculty and our staff. To learn more about our award winners, profiles of each of them have been placed in your folders today. I'd like to thank my fellow Regent committee members who will be helping to present the awards this morning. Regent Plant, Regent Jones, and Regent Stanford Taylor. Deciding on the recipients is never, never easy, but it is always inspiring to see the outstanding talent that is found in our system. This year's winners are impressive examples of the powerful impact that excellent teachers have on <coughs> students' learning and on students' lives. We look forward to hearing from each of them. Regent Plant will uh, uh, present the first award. Uh, good morning. Um, I'm honored today to present our first Regents Teaching Excellence Award to Dr. Rex Hanger, a professor of Geography, Geology, and Environmental Sciences at UW-Whitewater. During his 19-year career at UW-Whitewater, Dr. Hanger has been recognized for both his work in the classroom and for his experimental hands-on learning opportunity he presents to students through his field studies, study abroad, and his independent study courses. He's a strong advocate for inclusive excellence goals with an emphasis on equity in the natural sciences uh, for gender equity. He has mentored 51 undergraduate research, uh, researchers, of which nearly 75% were females, and two were McNair scholars. 15 of his students went on to receive internship awards, primarily in research museums. Four of those students were awarded the prestigious Smithsonian Instance, uh, Institution Internship more than any other faculty member in the United States. Dr. Hanger, affectionately known as the fossil guy, um, <laughs> takes students on trips to fossil-rich locations uh, throughout the US, western United States, and he has also twice led large study abroad groups to Scotland, the birthplace of modern geology. He is at the forefront of creating onli online lab uh, science <laughs> courses at UW-Whitewater, which has expanded course options for students unable to participate in face-to-face -face lab courses. And recently, he was named the adjunct curator of geology for the Milwaukee Public Museum. Since 2005, he has been an associate director for the Special Initiatives Program and the underrepresented groups at the Wisconsin Space Grant Consortium. Among his accomplishments, Dr. Hanger has created a virtual field trip uh, to enable students to study important sites remotely. A colleague had this to say about his effort, and I quote, Dr. Hanger's designed this wonderful project in part to help physically challenge students to participate in field studies to experiment the experience the magic of geology under his guidance. It's an important testament to Dr. Hanger's commitment to inclusivity. It is my privilege to introduce our first 2019 Regent Teaching Excellent Award to Dr. Rex Hanger. Thank you very much, President Cross, the rest of the Regents. I am honored and humbled to receive this award, especially in Van Hise Hall, a very <laughs> famous geologist. And when I walked up here, I walked past Chamberlain Hall, another brilliant geologist from the past who started his career at Whitewater Normal School <laughs> before moving on elsewhere. It is an old, unattributed truism in geology that the best geologists 
are the ones that have seen the most rocks. <laughs> and as beautiful as the southeastern Wisconsin farmland countryside is, the possibility of seeing actual rocks is vanishingly small. Uh, coming from the mountainous and rocky southwest, uh, this sparseness of geology's currency, rocks, um, forced me to immediately develop relations with all of our local quarry operators and plan field trips for all of our classes to get students interested in these things. First locally and then to farther and farther <coughs> locations. Our campus motto at the time was stay close and go far. And I took that to mean both in geographical miles and in millions of years of time back in the rock record. As just going to field sites morphed into guiding more and more undergraduate research projects, my students received more and more accolades, as you heard, and more importantly, funding from two primary sources, our on-campus UW-Whitewater undergraduate research program and, of course, the Wisconsin Space Grant Consortium. Uh, it is right here, though, that I need to thank the administrators of UW-Whitewater, yes, uh, for helping me to achieve the dream of creating a top-notch experiential learning geology program. People like Vice Provost Greg Cook, always been very helpful to me. My former dean, David Travis, who's now provost at River Falls, and especially my former dean, Mary Pinkerton. Um, I tell people that I don't recall her ever telling me no, and that if you really, truly want to accomplish something big, Sell your vision to an administrator. <laughs> when Whitewater joined the River Falls Experience Scotland, Scotland Consortium, Mary came to me to be the very first in a long line of faculty from UW-Whitewater that now teach there. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, in Scotland, the birthplace of modern geology. Uh, I jumped at the chance to take two different cohorts of our UW-Whitewater students to stay close, yet go even farther from home. Um, this continues in spring 2020, when I'll be teaching in Hangzhou, China. I don't know if I pronounced it right. Um, with their Experience China program. Uh, the campus there is just a short distance from what we geologists call the standard Permian-Triassic boundary. It marks the greatest crisis in Earth's history that we suffered over 250 million years ago. The license plate on my Subaru Forester, parked in lot 20 there, reads Permian. Uh, so you can imagine that I could not turn down the opportunity to teach there. All right, well, here's where I want to roll up my sleeves and give you a killer lecture <coughs> on geology and paleontology, but I need to stop to give thanks to those that are the real reason I'm standing here um, my students, of course, but more significant still, first, my sister Terry, who was the very first <clears throat> to show me the beauty of science. My parents, who loved and supported me, a son that was in love with something completely different than what was part of their lives. My father was a career army officer, uh, and I was the son that loved rocks. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, my beautiful wife, Melissa. <clears throat> my inquisitive son, Craig, without whom I couldn't do any of this. Thank you all. Well, good morning again. It is really my privilege to present the Second Regents Teaching Excellence Award to Dr. Gary Onan, Chair and Professor of the Department of Animal and Food Science at UW River Falls. During his nearly 21 year career at River Falls, Dr. Onan has taught a variety of courses, both general and discipline specific. He regularly advises 50 or more students. 
As a department chair, she is leading the animal science program during a time of significant enrollment growth and rapid change. Animal science is now the largest program at the university and has added an emphasis in companion animals, both to meet industry needs and to better serve pre-veterinary medicine students. Dr. Onan works to provide meaningful undergraduate research opportunities for his students. These high impact practices, practice is especially important for students who want to be competitive in veterinary school placements, participate in the McNeil program, or pursue a graduate degree. In 2015, Dr. Onan was awarded a Fulbright scholarship to work in Romania, where he taught two courses in animal production and collaborated with faculty there to redesign courses to create more hands-on laboratory exercises and develop effective outreach programs. He has co-authored two books with a longtime Romanian colleague, a laboratory manual, manual for introductory animal science courses and a swine management text, which is currently going to press. He is a member of the American Society of Animal Science and the American Registry of Professional Animal Scientists, earning the Professional Animal Scientist designation in 2006. Also worth noting, as the warmer weather approaches, he is highly sought after as a judge for county and regional fairs in Wisconsin and Minnesota, often, often serving at 20 to 25 fairs a summer. A student made this comment about honoree, quote, without research experience, getting into graduate school becomes a tougher task. So I really appreciate that Dr. Onan was so willing to work on research with his already full schedule of activities, end quote. On that note, please join me in welcoming our second award recipient, Dr. Gary Onan of River Falls. Well, thank you, Regent Jones, for those kind words, um, and to the committee for your consideration of my nomination. Um, I also am very humbled uh, by this award. Before I go further, though, I just have a couple anecdotes. Um, I'm just an old farm kid at heart, and I frankly hate rocks. <laughs> I spent most of my childhood picking them off of our glacial till soils, and I, I had nearly a 20-year career as a dairy farmer, and I was one of the very early adapters of no-till farming practices because I was darn sick of digging those rocks out of the dirt <laughs> when we tilled the soil, so that helped a lot. But anyway, um, my other little short story is that I was in this room once before in my life. I spent seven years on this campus as a student, but um, not in a field where you would get in this building very often. But I was in this room, this very room, once before in my life, and that was in the fall of 1967, late August, early September, I don't remember. I was just embarking on my career here as a new freshman at UW-Madison. This building was under construction, and me and a couple of my house buddies thought we'd check it out. <laughs> It was nearly complete. We rode the elevator, decided the best place to go has got to be the top floor. And so we came up here and walked around, looked out the windows. Uh, I think there was a table here and some chairs, probably not the same ones, but, um, and, uh, and then we rode back down the elevator. And, and so uh, I was probably here before any of you were by lunchtime. <laughs> And it was actually just a few days later, the 
same group of us were standing there on the, just above the entry to the underground garage watching a massive Vietnam anti-war demonstration march down Linden Drive and up Charter. And so it was an interesting time, a very interesting time. But anyway, um, being motivated to achieve success in and beyond the classroom is, is uh, certainly helped along when you have really excellent students. And so I give most of the credit for any modicum of success that I've achieved to those students. Um, I think I'm blessed with maybe better students than some folks have. As a whole, they know the value of hard work. They are familiar with the rewards that can be uh, achieved for taking responsible action. They're empathetic, they're service-oriented, and they're respectful. And they, act they actively seek meaningful learning experiences. And in, so let me just talk about those students a little bit, uh, particularly those in my kind of program, animal science program, program that was historically focused on production animal, food producing animal management. Um, we broadened our horizons a bit, a lot. Uh, but still, even today, a pretty high percentage of those students are from rural areas of Wisconsin. Um, some are from farms, fewer and fewer all the time. But still a pretty good group from rural, non-farm, small towns. Many are still first-generation college students, as I was. Um, but increasingly, more and more of them are suburban and even urban, uh, as, as we've expanded our programs and incorporated uh, more species of animals, as it were. And today, it, somewhat in excess of 80% of them are female. And so that's been a marked, marked shift. Um, one of the, the one common thread, though, that they all have is that they grew up caring for animals. Uh, and so whether it was a, a steer, or a hog, or a sheep, or a goat, or a dairy cow, or a horse, or a dog, or a cat, or some other fuzzy little critter, they all started at very young ages caring for animals. And I firmly believe that that activity, more than many, will develop maturity in young people and, and do so better than most activities. <clears throat> that sort of activity enhances a human's innate desire for caregiving. It teaches people to be responsible. It teaches them empathy and it teaches them to learn from their mistakes. Because when you're raising animals, you're gonna make mistakes. And um, a substantial proportion of those students that I get were exposed to that opportunity originally and often at a very young age, six, seven years old, um, through 4-H projects. I remember one time I was judging a preview show up in Polk County, probably, maybe St. Croix. Beef cattle show, steers, big steers, 12 to 1,400 pounds. And this little girl comes out, she's like this tall. <coughs> and there's this steer that's this tall. And she's hanging onto that halter, leads him into the show ring. It was just beautiful to see her do that. Pretty amazing. Um, so I, I suspect many of you are at least moderately familiar with 4-H. 4-H um, programs serve roughly 6 million youth in the United States every year. There's something in excess of 500,000 adult volunteers that keep those programs going. Parents, grandparents, other interested adults. Um, 
And, and that activity, frankly, serves as a pipeline for students, for programs like mine and similar programs at Madison and Platteville and other schools of agriculture and animal science. So as, as uh, Regent Jones' introduction pointed out, I spend quite a bit of time working with 4-H groups throughout the state. So most of the summer, on the road, running from this end of the state to that end and back again and then back again. Um, and it's, it's fun, although I get a little burned out by Labor Day, but it's fun. And I, I partly do that because of what 4-H has meant to me. I met my wife, Linda, who's sitting over there, through 4-H. She always beat me in the cattle shoring. <laughs> but anyway, we still managed to make it work out. Um, it instilled in me um, the desire to work with livestock in a, in a large way responsible for my career path and where I am today was that organization. And, and I spend countless hours, even during the academic year, weekends and evenings, um, running educational programs for 4-H livestock participants. And of course, it's not just livestock. They broaden, again, 4-H has broadened their programming and they deal with all kinds of things, animals and other projects and are a significant source of good, highly motivated young people for all kinds of science and STEM sorts of uh, pursuits. So I've got a bit of a concern though. That whole program rests on the shoulders of professionals that are part of UW Extension, county youth agents, state specialists, that provide the resources to all those adult volunteers and to all those young participants that give them the background knowledge and the experiences that allow them to do a good job in those projects and then pursue careers in those industries. And, and that support is eroding. And, and that's been particularly noticeable, notable in just the last couple years here now as UW Extension has had to deal with their budget constraints. And so I'm just gonna leave you with one thought. It's my sincere hope that UW system, in conjunction with our state government leaders and others, that um, we can somehow find ways to renew support for this very important youth program that provides such positive outcomes for producing the kinds of citizens that we need in this state. So again, thank you all. It's been a pleasure. to present our third award, which recognizes the outstanding teaching of a department or program. This year, that honor goes to the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders at UW-Eau Claire. Represented here today by Department Chair, Dr. Vicki Samuelson. UW-Eau Claire's Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders or CSD for short, delivers an innovative undergraduate program and prepares graduate students for licensure in speech language pathology with in-person and fully online degree options. Its mission is to prepare competent, compassionate, and collaborative professionals who understand the scientific, theoretical, interprofessional, and social basis of human communication to foster access for an increasingly diverse clientele. The CSD program also provides students with multiple interprofessional experiences outside the traditional classroom, where students can further develop their teaching, 
clinical and research skills, from an on-site speech and language clinic to a camp for patients with speech challenges. The program focuses on building learning opportunities for students while simultaneously serving important community and regional needs. The department engages in regular discussions of teaching through their reciprocal mentoring program, recognizing that everyone along the experience scale, from new to veteran educators, can provide value supporting and mentoring others. A graduate of the program said, quote, if you were to ask each of the CSD undergraduate and graduate students how the department faculty has impacted their academic careers, every single one of them could tell a personal anecdote about times they have grown as clinicians, broken down barriers, and met significant milestones due in no small part to the wisdom and kindness of this department, end quote. It is an honor to present our Regent Teaching Excellence Program Award to Department Chair Dr. Vicki Samuelson, here on behalf of UW-Eau Claire's Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders. Congratulations. We come as a team. We travel. <laughs> we travel. We work together as a team. Um, so thank you, Regent, for introducing us. You actually uh, helped me out with the first part of what I wanted to share here, because the name of our department, Communication Sciences and Disorders, uh, is not a very transparent name. So as you indicated, we prepare our undergrad and our grad students to work professionally <coughs> as speech language pathologists. And what that means is that our students, uh, when they graduate, are populating the Eau Claire area, the state, the region, and now with our online grad program, we already have several cohorts who are populating coast to coast, um, border to border, working as speech language pathologists. And as speech language pathologists, what they do is they work with people with communication disorders. So that means across the lifespan from the neonatal intensive care unit into the elder years, they're working with people who have had strokes, who have aphasia, um, people with traumatic brain injury, um, children and adults on the autism spectrum, children and adults with hearing impairments, voice disorders, fluency disorders, so people who stutter, um, also with people who need the support of alternative communication devices. And many of our students are populating the schools here in Wisconsin working as SLPs with students in, in the classrooms who struggle with spoken language skills and then also struggle with literacy and, and academic skills. That's who we are. So I'd like to introduce um, specifically a couple of my colleagues who are here today, um, Abby Hemreich and Tom Sather and Jerry Hepner, who unfortunately was not able to join us. But the reason I'd like to single these three people out is that teaching and learning has a really long history in our department. It so precedes me as chair, it precedes all of us as faculty. It's been a tradition for many, many years in our department. But currently, Abby, Tom, Jerry, they spearhead our focus. Um, they are mentoring us to become better, stronger teachers. Without their mentoring and support and their study of, of teaching and learning, we wouldn't be here today. So thank you guys. Um, and then Tom Kovacs is our newest team member. So he joins us here today. 
And I'd also like to recognize Dean Carmen Manning, our colleague, Dean of our college, who has been an amazing support for all we've done, all we keep saying we're going to keep doing, and thank you, Carmen, for that. So, on behalf of, most importantly, our students, but our faculty, clinical and academic faculty, and our staff, and also all of the community members that we serve in our clinic and all of our outreach group. We'd just like to really express our appreciation for this award. It's, it's a significant honor. Um, we're humbled by that honor. And so thank you all. Thank you to the selection committee. Uh, we're, we're delighted to be here. Abby is going to share a couple of thoughts about who we are as a teaching learning community. And since we're tag teaming, I'll keep it really brief. So um, just want to reiterate that we are really honored to have this award um, for all of the work that we do to benefit our students. And that really is the focus. And I just also want to say I'm really lucky to work in a department where everyone is so like-minded. We're really focused on um, the student needs and having collaborative colleagues who want to work together for the better betterment of our students. Um, I wanted to just give a few examples of some of the, the things that we're doing in our department to really move teaching and learning forward um, and acknowledge a few people who have been um, players in that process. So um, one example, we have a teaching and learning research lab. So we have about 20 students and five faculty working every week um, on developing the evidence around teaching and things that we're doing in our field. Um, and that's supported by our Office of Research um, and Sponsored Programs at Eau Claire, which is really helpful to help us do that, that work. Um, we have an instructional internship program. So we are constantly trying to get our students interested in academic careers. There's a shortage in our field of um, doctorally trained um, uh, individuals, and so we're trying to facilitate that um, and giving them opportunities to practice teaching under direct apprenticeship um, with one of us as a faculty member. So that's a, a really unique opportunity that we're providing. Um, and then all of the active learning opportunities that we're providing, you've probably heard about um, high impact practices, and we are definitely incorporating those um, in the classroom and outside of the classroom, um, academic experiences, clinical experiences, since we are training future professionals. Um, and those are supported by our Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning on our campus, lots and lots of support from them. Um, our dean and our whole college um, are constantly encouraging us to just try it. Let's do something new, and then we can adapt it um, once we learn a little bit more about how it goes. Um, so really, I just want to say thanks once again for this award. We're honored, um, and it really underscores the collaborative and supportive faculty in our department and the wonderful students that we work with every day. Number 11 on the agenda, and I'll like invite Regent Klein to present our resolution of appreciation to Congressman and Regent Emeritus Brian Saab. Regent Klein. Thank you, Regent President Bailing. Um, it's my privilege and honor to be here today to be able to offer the resolution of appreciation for Regent Emeritus Brian G. Stiles' service on the UW Board of Regents. By way of background, Brian and I were appointed and confirmed on the same day, probably about three years ago. And I first met Brian in an or the ornate gover uh, governor's press conference room right outside the governor's office. For all of us who've been through Senate confirmations, you remember the nerves that were involved in going in and answering questions and being grilled up. Um, so we went, into the, we went into the briefing room and we had about a half an hour before the hearing was to begin. And um, I, I have to admit, I was nervous, and I wanted to do a good job. And in comes, you know, the appointment secretary, which is always somebody who's very young and very fresh and, and with it, but, but, but somewhat inexperienced. So we asked for some tips. You know, what should we say? How should we handle it? And she said very boldly, just don't contradict the governor. <laughs> I thought I thought I thought I was going to die. I thought, well, what issues and how will we say it and what scope? And you know, and Brian looked at me and he had, he kind of rolled his eyes. He said, "We've got it." 
And, and he said, he spoke on behalf of Lisa, myself, and, and you know, it was just at that moment that I thought this, I felt this sense of con confidence, and I also felt this, in, this sense of inclusion. I was part of the team. And I thought, I like this guy. And um, so I knew we would get along. And so um, as time wore on, my first impressions were, were very accurate of Brian. Um, I think for those of us who have served with him, we know he is wise beyond his years. And he does something which I, I, I just love. He disagrees without being disagreeable. Um, he's got this awesome sense of humor and this incredible loyalty and sense of responsibility, um, which I've come to know in meeting his parents and his sister to his family, to his friends, and to his duties as a public servant. Um, I kind of viewed Brian as my seatmate, although we really never sat together. <laughs> um, I came to rely on him, his judgment, his perspective. Um, I didn't always vote the same way, but I always I developed this deep and abiding respect for what he had to say and for his perspective. I think we all know if Paul Ryan had remained in the House just a little longer, we might well have, have seen him follow, follow in his grandfather's footsteps um, to be the chair of this body. Um, but we all knew that he would run for con Congress when the moment arrived, and we all knew he would win. Um, there was, when he announced, it was, it, it was kind of funny because there was a buzz and, you know, of course, I think a lot of people in the nation were like, oh, Paul Ryan's not running again. And so there was a political pundit out there who sort of made the, you know, bemoaned the fact that Paul wasn't going to be on the ticket. And um, our, our, our fellow regent, uh, Whitburn, came out in a strong possible statement to the press and said, basically, this is a, 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 a great leader who you, you are going to be very proud of. And I think he spoke for all of us when he said that. So instinctively, we knew that the characteristics that we had come to know and appreciate in his work here would be <coughs> embraced by the voting public. The top-notch brain, the loyalty, the dedication to family, friends, public service. And I would add this, this very important thing in politics, which I'm not sure I have, which is the vision to see the playing field and to really understand where you can be impactful um, and, and to make that impact. Um, he has had love and compassion for the, those on the journey with him. Um, I, we heard last night that uh, uh, former student regent uh, James Langness is, is now on his staff in Congress. So while we will miss you here very much, Brian, um, we, we offer with enthusiastic and, and, and warm congratulations um, your, um, your new role as the congressman from the 1st Congressional District. Um, and I will now, on behalf of the body, read the resolution. Whereas Brian G. Skyle dedicated two and a half years of ex exemplary service as a regent of the University of Wisconsin system from May 2016 to December 2018, and whereas Brian served as an engaged member of the Business and Finance Committee, including service as vice chair for one year, and as well as chair of the Subcommittee on Investments for two years, during which time he helped oversee the transition of trust fund management to the state of Wisconsin Investment Board, which we heard today was very impactful financially for the system. Whereas through serving on the Capital Budget, uh, Planning and Budget Committee, as both member and chair, Brian worked to, to increase the UW system's efficient stewardship of fiscal and capital resources. And whereas Brian was also a member of the Audit Committee and the Committee on Student Discipline and other student appeals and served as a regent member of the Educational Communications Board. And whereas Brian learned a, earned a law degree from the University of Wisconsin Law School, proudly following in the footsteps of his grandfather, George K. Stiles Sr., who not only held the law degree, but also served as a regent from 1990 to 1997, including two years as regent president. Right there is his picture. Brian has worked to publicly honor and reward the commitment of extraordinary UW educator serving two years on the Academic Staff Excellence Awards Committee, and whereas during his time as regent, Brian has proved to be consistent, a consistent advocate for high quality and affordable education. Be it therefore resolved that the Board of Regents of the University of Wisconsin System hereby commend Brian G. Style for his service to the UW system and his outstanding commitment to higher education in Wisconsin and wishes him well in the, his new position as the U.S. Representative for the 1st Congressional District. I give you Congressman G. Style.
Tracy, thank you for the kind words. If my, my father was here, he wouldn't be talked about. If, if, my, if my mother was here, she would have believed everything you said. So I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the introduction. I, I appreciate the, uh, the honor Governor Walker gave me to serve with all of you, and I appreciate everybody here who has allowed to uh, serve along as we work to better uh, our state and protect uh, its, one of its greatest assets, the University of Wisconsin system. I, I follow in, in footsteps, I, I come into this room and I see the portrait of my grandfather and I think of all the memories of, of my family, but, but also really this campus and my alma mater, uh, my time working with the UW system. I think about my memories that began at the beginning and kind of travel up to today. Uh, and I'll, I'll share with you my first memory ever is when I was, a, I was a little kid and as Tracy noted, my grandfather was, was on the board. I didn't know what the Board of Regents was. I probably didn't care at the time. <laughs> but, but I did know what University of Wisconsin football was. And so I, I came up and you had to go to the, the president's house uh, with my grandfather before you were allowed to go to the football game. And that's all I cared about. So you would go there and then you go to the football game. And he was telling me a story uh, as we were going into uh, Camp Randall, the history of Camp Randall, and how he came back from World War II. Uh, and there was no housing available because of the GI Bill. All these students were rushing onto campus and he was late to join the war and so he was one of the last guys to come out of Japan. Uh, so school had already started but they allowed him to, to join into the class and so he came and there, there was temporary housing uh, at Camp Randall. And there, were, there was a little tiny room that he pointed where he would have been just off of the football stadium where they weren't allowed to be on Saturdays. They'd be kicked out of their own uh, places Saturday mornings before the games. He said there were, it was triple bunks on both sides. There was six men in a room, and I thought, holy cow, Grandpa, that, that must have been terrible. And he looked down at me and said, it's a hell of a lot better than Papua New Guinea. <laughs> I thought, yes, only with perspective. Uh, do I have a full appreciation uh, for how true that must have been at that time, but I also think of the great investment uh, that we made as a country, in particular at the federal level, at that time through the GI Bill, uh, that made great opportunities for individuals who college would not have been uh, in their path to become an opportunity for them and for them to grow and to continue in their career. The commitment that we made at the federal level uh, back then, uh, generations before myself, I think is critical. And that's a commitment that I think we need to continue to make sure that individuals, in particular first generation students, have the opportunity to go to college and live out that same, same dream. Uh, I'll travel along as you think about all these memories that, that come to you. One of the first memories for me is a regent and it's only fitting today because I apparently gained the title of emeritus, which feels completely inappropriate for my age. <laughs> but, but my first meeting, Tracy and I had been confirmed, had been appointed and confirmed by the Senate, and we went, I went up uh, to the University of Wisconsin Green Bay uh, in April, and in Green Bay, uh, as you would know well, it snowed. So it was a snowy day, but we got up there the night before, and so I was not yet a regent, uh, but I came into the reception the night before, I was at the, uh, the football stadium at Green Bay. Uh, and I chatted with, uh, with two chancellors, no names will be given, and introduced myself and uh, apparently did it quite poorly because we talked for a while about the system and about different things. And at the end, uh, two chancellors said, well, I, I'm a little confused. Where are you a student at? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> but it reminded me that things haven't changed much. I had the opportunity, uh, last week my, my grandma turns 95 next week. Uh, and I had the opportunity, I won't be, won't be home on her birthday, so I came home and I took her out to dinner. And so we went to Mass uh, at St. William's and we went to a, uh, a, a little fundraiser dinner for the Boy Scouts uh, in the basement of St. William's uh, right, after, right after Mass. It was a prime rib dinner. And uh, my, my grandma's uh, well known, but she's not off, out as often anymore. And so there was like a line to say hello to my grandma, one after the other. And uh, one of her friends came up who was, who was also in her 90s and said Mavis and talked to her. And then she turned and looked at me and said, now what's your name? I said, oh, I'm Brian. She said, now, now you live in Jamesville? I said, yeah, I, li I live in Jamesville. She said, now, which high school are you at? <laughs> so I've become younger as I've gone older. Uh, but it reminds me of anything that, that we'll, we're all students, we're all learning, and it's a lifelong uh, learning experience and how critical that is. And may we never forget that importance of continuing our education uh, through, throughout our life. I became, a, I, I asked uh, and was given the opportunity to become a regent because I really believe in the importance of education and what it could do to transform uh, people's lives and preparing students for the jobs of the future. But not lost on any of us is that 85% of the jobs don't exist today. 
And so it's, uh, it's beyond a specific training for a specific skill. It's an ability to learn and to challenge our minds and to be prepared for the jobs that will be coming to our state and to our country and to our region. I'm also proud of the work that we did as Board of Regents. I, I, I'm very proud of our work to make sure that education was afford, is affordable and accessible. And in particular, some of my work on the student fees. I know that not everybody probably agreed with me day in and day out on student fees, but I'm honored and confident that the board will continue to make sure that our education is affordable and accessible to students and a holistic view of what that, what that means. I, my, my journey on this, I feel like now in my new role continues. I was, had the opportunity to be with Chancellor Shields and President Ray Cross and Chancellor Ford the other day. In fact, I've seen Chancellor Ford, I think, five times in the last three weeks, <laughs> which might be more than I saw you on a, on a basis when I, was, uh, when I was in my role uh, as a region. But I think that's important because my new role continues just in a different way and fighting for the importance of education, the importance of our state, and the importance of the University of Wisconsin system. We think about the UW system, $900 million in federal funds. $600 million of federal research dollars that come in uh, to the University of Wisconsin system, how critical that is, what that does for our state, our state's economy, and really to our nation. We think about the Wisconsin idea, extending these ideas to the border of the state, but in a modern uh, technological world, the boundary of our state is really the corners of the earth. And so there's a real opportunity through that federal investment to make sure that we are at the pinnacle and the best in the entire United States. As we look not only, uh, as we talk about affordability, there, the federal government, as it did for my grandfather through the GI Bill, continues to play an important role through Pell Grants, through federal financial aid. It's an area that I continue uh, to explore and to dig into as to how we make our system better and work better uh, for students. It brings me to that, that point when we think about students on what a great group we have at the University of Wisconsin Board of Regents and I'll tell you the perspective you get is now that I've arrived in Washington, how much more I appreciate my time on the board and the, con the congeniality that we held. We could, as Tracy would say, be disagree without being disagreeable. I think we did a great job of fighting for policies and not fighting people. And in Washington, far too often I see, I see the reverse of that. And I often think how much more we could get done if we were focused not on the, on the politics but on the policy. I look back to one of, our, one of our fellow regents when I first arrived on the board and we had a discussion. We said, you know, how, how do you vote? How do you make this analysis? And he said, we, we had this conversation and, and ultimately the choice is really easy. It's, is you read the policy before you on every single issue that you vote on, right? Is, the, is this policy in the best interest of students? If it is, you vote yes. If it's not in the best interest of students, you vote no. And sometimes we may disagree, but if we all ask ourselves that same question, we're far better off. I think the same needs to be done in Washington. Every vote that people take, if they weren't worried about the noise and the political implications, but they ask themselves, is this vote in the best interest of the people of the Wisconsin and of our nation? You vote yes. If it's not, you vote no. I think it's a much better path. I think our country would be better off if we learn from the example uh, that we see day in and day out from the University of Wisconsin Board of Regents. And it's something I hope that I can take to Washington to make ourselves just a little bit better. I want to close and tell you what an honor it's been to serve with you, what a great appreciation I have for our state, for our university system, and for my alma mater, UW-Madison, in that bucket. And I'll leave, I often think back uh, for one final quote uh, to our old uh, President Emeritus, Chuck Pruitt, who would always say, as I sit in these committees that go on and on, and he would always say, everything's been said, but not everyone's had a chance to say it. <laughs> and I think to myself in those committee hearings, Doggone it, that's really true right now. <laughs> and so with that, I'll appreciate the importance of brevity. I can't thank you so much for the honor uh, that's been given to me to serve with you on Wisconsin. Thank you.
So our final matter, are there any communications, petitions, or memorials? Seeing none, thank you everyone, and we are adjourned. Okay.